what Haig is trying to say is that if we insist that the scriptures answer questions for which they were never written to answer, then we will ine ine inevitably misinterpret and twist them to derive answers we desire. So it's with that that we pick up tonight's study, and we're going to turn to Matt Slick. And what we're working our way towards, just to kind of give you a sneak peek, is in my commentary, I've got a list that I borrowed from um, uh, Carm from the website that I'm going to reference here in a moment. And it's a uh, kind of a table that contains... Um, some columns and some headings and some labels and we've got the name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit across the top as labels and then we've got a column running down the left hand side where we've got labels and attributes of God or attributes of, of deity and then we've got verses that correspond to the attribute and the person in view. And what we're going to find as we examine this table in subsequent weeks, and we're going to take our time going through this, we'll look at each and every passage, what we're going to find is that the Bible presents us with a picture of God from a comprehensive perspective. So it's only after putting all the pieces on the table and backing up and looking at the table and all the pieces as a whole that we can then begin to draw a comprehensive summary of who God is, starting from the Tanakh and working our way through the writings and the prophets into the apostolic scriptures and throughout the the, you know, the revelation passages, we be, the, begin to then realize that this God that we serve is complex in his nature. And it's because of passages that, that highlight his nature, his miracles, his creative power. And we can see that the how the Bible interweaves the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together in this great narrative. And that, in my opinion, forms a very powerful a uh, cohesive, unbreakable uh, chain of facts that we can rally around as Trinitarian, Orthodox Trinitarians. So that's where that's what we're, we're working our way towards. Here's what I have to say in my commentary. Lastly, before we briefly exegete each passage in the Trinity chart below, Matt Slick and Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry, CARM, provide this widely accepted, somewhat standard Christian interpret uh, Christian representation and articulation of the concept of Trinity for us to remind ourselves of before going into scriptures themselves, and into the scriptures. So let's see what Matt Slick has to say. This is a quote from Matt Slick, and we'll look at this tonight. Matt Slick says, and by the way, Matt Slick is a Trinitarian, so he's not like Dr. Dale Tuggy or someone like that. He's not a Unitarian Christian. He is a Trinitarian Christian, like myself. He's a biblical um, monotheistic Trinitarian, so he believes in one God who expresses himself in three persons. So here's what, God, uh, here's what um, um, uh, Matt Slick has to say. By the way, this is not an endorsement of everything that Matt Slick believes. I, whenever I make quotes from authors, uh, sometimes people write into me and say, okay, Ariel, so you believe that everything Matt Slick has to say? Because notice, he says this elsewhere, and he says this, he says this. No, that's, that's not what I'm trying to say. Rather, what I try to do is I try to highlight authors in my own commentary that hold um, relevant pieces of truth that lend to my overall understanding of the particular topic at hand. In this case, Matt Slick holds to a theology of Trinity that's similar to my own. I don't, again, endorse everything that Matt Slick has to say. I know that many Christian authors endorse a law-free gospel that, like I keep talking about with, with Paul, and yet if they are staunch Trinitarians, that I am going to quote their theology and I'm going to champion that theology, even if I disagree with them when it comes to their position on Torah or something like that. Okay? Enough of my disclaimer. All right. Uh, Slick has to say, God is.